Hey everyone, this is Kathy Mazak and today is my birthday. So <laughs> um, I'm coming to you live because actually I love to be with people on my birthday. Um, I, it's a good thing I live with a bunch of people because uh, my daughter made me a cake today and I'm feeling really happy to actually have gotten a cake on my birthday against all odds since normally we would make a box cake or we would go to the store and buy a cake. But um, today we actually, like my daughter found the ingredients and made an absolutely awesome cake. So yay. All right, today I am bringing to you my experience working with a remote team to talk about how to work with your research team remotely. So a little background, um, I um, founded a research center, so I know what it's like to work with a research team, although I'm definitely a qualitative researcher, so I do not have a lab. My husband has a lab, but I don't. Um, but I, so I have a lot of academic experience managing research teams, some of them, you know, like with multiple, you know, multiple grad students and stuff, a lot of you are doing much more, but I wanted to talk about like that combined with what I have been doing for the last year, which is managing a remote team as part of my, um, online writing coaching business. So, um, my team is, we have Gosh, we have five people plus extras. So we actually are probably a team right now of about six and everybody is in different parts of the world. So we have um, our podcast production happens um, in the States. Um, our coaches are in the States, our copywriters in the States. Um, and then we have, um, I have a local, um, a full-time local person here and I have a full-time operations manager in Barbados. And so we work all together, um, <laughs> uh, online. And so I wanted to talk about some tools that we use to do it, how I would translate those tools into working with a research team and just kind of get your mind sparked for how you might be able to continue the process of moving your research team forward, even remotely. Um, so I'm gonna talk mostly about communications. Obviously, if your research team involves doing experiments in a lab, that is not something I can speak to, but I can speak to how you can keep communications going among your team, um, despite the fact that we're on lockdown. So. Let's get started. My first um, number one tool that I recommend is Trello. Um, now, Trello is a project management tool. You don't have to use Trello. I'm going to tell you why I like it, um, but you certainly don't have to use Trello. And I would say that our team is big enough now that and, and we're doing things that are complicated enough that actually we are probably going to move as a business team to a different project management software. But the point is that you need some kind of project management software. And there's a few reasons for that. One is that back and forth emails, all these tool, tools I'm going to talk about are definitely like so that you avoid emails because back and forth emails are just not the most efficient way to run a team. So you need some kind of project management software. Now, what does that mean? Like, well, Trello is a free project management software. It's basically like the, the digital equivalent of like, um, a big board with, um, with three by five cards kind of pinned into it. Um, so you can do a lot of things with it because it's digital. You can hook documents to it. You can link between cards and things, but it's really nice for creating a workflow because you can like slide these digital cards down a line. So if you have like a workflow, you can be moving things to different stages of the workflow. And there's just lots of, it's a great container for all kinds of different kind of project management creativity. So Trello is what I recommend for most people who have small teams um, if you have a larger team, Trello starts to not quite be as efficient, but I think it's a great starting place. If you have zero project management, like software experience, I think that Trello is a really, really great place to start and it's free. So, um, for, you know, organizing, um, for organizing your lab, assigning people tasks, 
Um, that's what you really need a project management software for because you just don't want to do that over email. It's too many emails back and forth. So Trello is what I recommend. Okay. Then a few, some more tools that have been helpful. Of course, we use Google Drive for everything. So our team has a Google Drive um, shared drive. We pay for that. Um, uh, but maybe your university has, you know, a way, well, your university will, whatever Google thing your university does, um, you can certainly use that. You can use your own drive and share it just because we're in a business and we're kind of like all over the world. We are, um, we're using this like kind of paid Google drive, but anyway, Google drive is great because it lets you collaborate on things remotely and simultaneously. There's not like document version problems. It saves all your, your previous versions. You know, I don't have to get on a big well, some people might need a, a soapbox about Google Drive. I used to not like it. I used to be very much like a Microsoft Office plus Dropbox person, but Google Drive has eliminated the need for those two things. And we just use Google Drive and Docs and Sheets. Um, and so that's how we are sharing and collaborating. You can do commenting. You can assign things inside of a document to people using the at, um, you know, feature. And so Google drive is a way that we collaborate. Um, we also, you also can really easily drop links from Google drive into Trello or connect Trello cards in with Google drive. And that is also helpful in terms of collaborating and reviewing documents, filling in worksheets, um, not worksheets, um, spreadsheets and that kind of stuff. So Trello and Google drive, but Here's let's, let's get to some like really, really good tools that you might not have heard of before. All right. So my team's favorite tool, or I don't know if my team's favorite tool, <laughs> it's my favorite tool is Voxer. Okay. It's spelled V O X E R. Uh, I use the free version. Um, and so all these tools that I'm mentioning are free actually, or at least have free versions that are totally workable. So Voxer is, it, it describes itself as a walkie talkie app. You can, it works best definitely like on your phone, but you can also use it on your desktop and it lets you basically do text messages and short voice messages back and forth. And I'm doing this because you hold this button down and you record what you're going to say. And then when you let go, it automatically sends it. So it's like leaving people voicemails back and forth, but faster. You know, um, and so what I love about it is that it's asynchronous. So it's voice messages, which to me are easier to do like than text messages or actually typing back and forth. So when I want to explain something to someone, I would much rather do it by calling them or seeing them or talking to them than by, you know, typing it out, especially if I'm typing it out in you know, messenger or WhatsApp or, or text messaging, right? So this is a way to, to get messages back and forth and communicate a lot of information very quickly. Um, but it's asynchronous and here's the good things about, you know, an asynchronous messaging system with your team. The good thing about it is that you can go back and listen so that if you are giving instructions to someone, they can kind of go back and hear them multiple, hear it multiple times. They can mark the message so that they can find it again. Um, and it's just, you know, you can follow a whole conversation, like a whole conversation could have happened between your lab people or your, your research team members without you. And then when you're ready to go check in on them, you open it up and because it's asynchronous, right? Then you go back and you check all the messages and see what's gone, what's, what's gone on. Um, so that's why I like Voxer. I like it because it lets me talk to people and, um, and express myself without having to type. It's fast and it's asynchronous. You can mute it so that, um, you, you know, if you're, if you're, if it's a weekend and you are trying to like not work on the weekends, you can mute it or, you know, you can check it just when you want. You can have it send you, um, notifications or not. Um, and I also feel like 
The way that I use Voxer, I really use it exclusively for my team. And so I know if a Voxer comes through, then it's something to do with my team. Um, and whereas if a text message comes through, it could be anybody, right? Um, the same with like WhatsApp, which usually my, my kid's school uses WhatsApp. Um, or Facebook Messenger. It could be anybody asking anything, but I really reserve Voxer for my team. And so it's a really good way to like keep in touch with your team and have a channel that's like, okay, this is just for us. Um, at least that's the way that I see it. So Trello, Google Drive, and Voxer. Those are the tools that we use to manage the remote team. Um, and I want to talk a little bit about having some kind of calendar software. So um, what the calendar software that we use is called Calendly, C-A-L-E-N-D-L-Y, Calendly. And Calendly lets you, it connects to your um, calendar system. So like we have it connected to my Google Calendar. And um, there's a free version and a paid version. So I think there's some limitations in terms of how many different types of events you can create um, in the free version, but we're paying for it right now. So I'll just, and, and it's $15 a month or something. It might be something that, um, I probably, you can absolutely get away with the, the free version, but, um, if you wanted to pay for it, even just for this time that we're working remotely, it's probably $15 a month. It's not a huge, huge deal. And, um, so you hook it to your Google calendar or whatever your calendar is, and it reads your calendar so that it won't schedule over things that are marked as busy in your Google Calendar. And what you do is you go into Calendly and you set up different types of events. So types of events that I have set up are um, business meetings. So if you, if you are another business person and you wrote to me and said, hey, I would like to talk to you about blah, 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 I would send you the Calendly link for like a 45 minute meeting at certain times of day. So um, if you're a one-on-one -on -one coaching client that's in one of my programs, it's a different link. It's for an hour and it's different, also different times of day. Um, or like, I also have like, oh, if you just need a 15 minute chat, here's a link to schedule a 15 minute chat. So what you can do though, besides, you know, um, having the, the, having these different kinds of events that are different lengths of time is that you also tell Calendly like when in the week are you willing to do this type of event and it will only schedule it during that time. And again, it'll read your Google calendar so it won't um, schedule over your events that are in your calendar. So the good thing about that is that you are actually really taking control of your time in a very methodical way, right? So you're saying like, okay, well, for example, like I can have lab meetings or I can have individual meetings with graduate students in my lab on Wednesdays or on Tuesdays and Thursdays between one and four. You set that up so that when the student wants to book with you, you send them a the booking link, which is just like a really simple link they click on it and then they are choosing when to meet with you at a time that works for them, but then you also know works for you. It's such like a natural way to put boundaries around your time. And if you don't wanna do more than three hours of a certain type of meeting per week, then you don't schedule yourself to be available for, those for more than three hours of meetings. Now, when it comes to working with the team, um, this would be a great tool to, um, to work with you, if you are needing to set up meetings with individual team members, um, and just a way to kind of like really, really be control of, in control of your schedule and eliminate email back and forth. So, um, we use, so let me just recap. I talked about Trello for project management, Voxer for asynchronous back and forth voice messages, Calendly for scheduling, Google Drive for everything. <laughs> and then I want to talk about a really easy tool for making voiceover screen um, videos, and that is Loom, L-O-O-M. Loom, the cool thing about Loom is that basically it's a little plugin that fits in your, that goes into your browser. And you click on it 
and you can record your voice and it will put like a little circle on the bottom of your face too, unless you turn that off. You don't have to have your face. Um, and it'll record you and whatever you're doing on your screen. So if you want to show somebody a process or a, um, or if you want to talk through a document, like it's a great way to like give somebody feedback without typing on the document, like just talk through a document, scroll through the document as you're talking, giving somebody feedback. Um, so it's a really great way to asynchronously do that kind of stuff. And then again, have it recorded so that your lab members or your research team members can go back to it and listen more than once if they need to. And the cool thing about Loom is that it's this little plugin. You click on it, it starts. When you finish the video, you are given a link to the video. You don't have to download and upload to YouTube and then share the YouTube link. It's just, it takes that downloading and uploading out of it for you. And so it's very, very simple, like super simple, just like one click thing for recording um, processes uh, and, um, and short, or even, you know, I've even done like longer Loom videos. So those are tools that could be helpful to you right now if you are working remotely with a research team. Trello or some kind of project management tool, Voxer for communication. I will also just mention that I know a lot of people use Slack, so that's another way to do it. I just like Voxer because of the voicing back and forth thing. Calendly, Google Drive, and Loom. And those are great ways to manage your team remotely, tools that you, um, that you really need for, um, for any kind of remote team management. That's also a great set of tools for working with PhD students or master's students in thesis. So, um, consider, you know, adopting some of these, you know, technological methods <laughs> to increase your communication and, um, keep your research team moving even in these, you know, times when we're quarantined at home. So if you would like to receive a PDF list of those tools um, and a lot of other stuff, <laughs> then I recommend you sign up for Monday's webinar. So Monday, I'm going to do a webinar at 2 o'clock um, Eastern, 2 o'clock p.m. Eastern. Um, I think it's going to be... I'm planning on it being like an hour and 15 minutes long, and I'm going to talk about five steps to sustaining your writing through the crisis. So a lot of people are home right now. <laughs> um, there, everything in academia has been kind of turned on its head, and last week was particularly difficult, I think, for just about everyone. As we're entering the second week of the world turned upside down, um, I think it's fair that some people are ready to think about their writing again. Um, some people are like, wow, this could be an awesome time for my writing. And other people are like, oh my gosh, I can't even think about my writing because my kids are home and whatever. Whether you, which either group that you fall into, I think that you will find value in this webinar. I, if you know anything about me, so if the first time we're meeting, hi, if you know anything about my, uh, about my coaching and my content, if you listen to my podcast, if you've seen any other videos, you know that I advocate for a very gentle with yourself <laughs> method of doing your writing. And so this will not be a webinar that talks about writing every day. This will not be a webinar that shames you about not writing. It's not, um, it's really, really the, the kinds of advice that I give are designed, is designed to not, um, to not create more guilt and overwhelm, but there's, it's specifically designed to create less guilt and overwhelm. So that's five steps that I'm going to talk about sustaining writing through this particular historical moment. Um, and I, um, and I'm really excited to share those with you. And when you sign up for the webinar, which the registration link is in the description of this video. So when you sign up for the webinar, you're going to get webinar reminders. And with the webinar reminders, um, you are going to get the um, this lovely PDF handout that I made. The PDF handout has the Tiger Time Journal in it. 
And Tiger Time is my signature method for how to get writing done without big blocks of time. I'm gonna be um, giving you a quick version of the Tiger Time method and my Tiger Time journal in the in the webinar. Um, I also have in here this resource list. I have a, um, a work from home planner that I'm gonna talk about. I'm gonna give you a method for planning out your days for working at home um, that if, if, you know, for writing, like so that you can get writing done when you're ready. Um, and I'm really gonna, I, I really wanna emphasize that I'm never going to tell you that you have to write every day. In fact, I'm the first person to tell you maybe now is not the best time to think about your writing. Um, but if you're ready to think about it, then I'm gonna give you some strategies to start small and work up to um, a really sustainable, healthy, happy, joyful writing practice. I'm not kidding, those are really important. So the handout uh, has a planner, it has a resource list and lots of other goodies in here that you are going to enjoy. You will get the handout if you register for the webinar. Of course, I want you to come to the webinar live, but if you can't come to the webinar live, we will send you a recording, but you have to register. So um, find the registration link in the in this um, in the description of this video and go ahead and register. I am very very excited to be giving you those five steps to sustaining writing. Let me just check the chat before I hi Trisha. Thank you Trisha. Thank you Amy. Thank you Joanne. Hi Latoya. Um, yeah Linda. Like yes. Loom like is something too that I had never heard of before. And somebody, you know, said, this is a really easy thing. And it is super easy. I love it for that reason. Like, because it's not that you don't have to download the thing and upload it. When I'm downloading and uploading, like if I'm creating materials for my courses or something that I want to use again, then I use Zoom. Um, I use Zoom. I create an MP4 and I upload it to my LMS or whatever. But, um, but if you want to do something really fast, like a little how to video or like a, this is the process to follow video, Loom is super, super easy. Um, yes, Linda. So thank you. Hi, th your, thank you, Cynthia. Hi, Jordina. And Ooh, Amy says that Loom Pro is apparently free now for teachers and students at schools and universities. Bonus. Yay. So awesome. Like check it out. Like there's lots of tools that are available uh, blah, 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 <laughs> available for free right now um, that aren't usually so, or their pro versions are available for a limited time for free. Um, so take advantage of all of that stuff. Like there's so many cool tools out there um, and, you know, be thoughtful of your students and the other people that you're communicating with. But simple tools, um, I think, are, are a really, really big asset. So I wanted to show you, I wanted to list the ones that we use for managing my remote team and, um, and encourage you to check some of them out if you think they might be useful. So register for the, for the webinar tomorrow. I hope that you have a wonderful day um, and hope to see you at the webinar tomorrow. Bye.